Hey guys, welcome to my process video for painting these oranges. This is going to be a little bit more of a freeform commentary than, for example, my avocado video. I'm going to talk very generally about the process, color, value, what I thought about for design, and just have some loose notes here rather than a concrete script. So here I'm starting with a poster study. This is basically a practice painting on a smaller scale. And this helps me out a lot because I'm just gonna mix all the colors. I'm gonna be forced to mix all the colors that I'm gonna use, and it really warms up my palette. And, you know, I also get to figure out what's the order I'm gonna paint things in, what my plan of attack for this painting is. I decided to basically paint from back to front and um, start with the slice in the back, move to the slice in the front, then do the plate, fill in the background. For the rest of the video, on the right side, I'll have a photograph of this poster study as well as a photograph of the setup. So now that I finished the poster study, I'm going to be sketching the setup. I'm trying to aim for a fairly accurate drawing that tells me what all the basic shapes are. I'm really going ham here trying to get the ellipse to be perfect because I know that if that ellipse is like a little bit off, it will be very obvious to like anyone of you in the painting. And you know, I just don't want that to like sink everything at the end. Um, as far as the orange slices go, those are more organic shapes, so you have a great room for error. I'm simplifying everything a lot here. I'm just trying to get the basic angles down. And once I put an angle down, I could compare that to the angles around it. And through these comparisons, I could slowly make the drawing more and more accurate. So for these first few colors I put down, I'm just taking my best guess. And when I put down two or three colors, I could start to compare the relationships between them. So for example, I put down this sort of like dark high chroma orange, and then I put down the color for the filling, which is sort of this more yellowy, lighter, lower chroma. And I realized, oh, I need to bring up the dark side a little bit more. I need to add a little bit more orange, bring up the chroma in there. And if you want accurate results, you really need to take this holistic approach where you're not really trying to take an individual color and totally nail it. You're just trying to get the overall relationships accurate. And once I have three colors down, I can start to judge very accurately because if two are working, then I know the third one needs to change. And from there, you could just build outwards. I tend to keep the lights a little bit more impasto. And I know, you know, I'm painting so thinly here, like you call that impasto, but the impressionists are laughing at me, but um. I keep my darks very, very thin, the lights a little bit thicker, and I try to set up for that contrast with like paint thickness, and you want to use like all the elements of painting to your advantage, so you'll have like some areas that are very thick, some areas that are very thin, some edges will be sharp, some edges will be soft, any sort of contrast you could set up, and that'll just really make your paintings very rich. And when you're starting out, you know, it's important to simplify and maybe like just think about just getting the values correct. And then you could sort of move on to color from there and just thinking of color in a more uh, semantic way where it's like warm colors and cool colors and not really worrying about like getting perfectly accurate colors and then just like building up those strategies. But like uh, really value is like king. None of this would work if the values are even a little bit off. And so even if I don't get perfectly accurate color, the, the value has to be correct. And I really tend to like to push myself and I really try to render this orange very tightly. And it's gonna like set up, like this is the first object I'm doing and it's gonna set up the finish of how the rest of the piece is going to be. So I'm gonna bring this up to the point where I feel uncomfortable going further and then I'll bring everything else up to that point. Um, and I'll work progressively. So, you know, I'll just do this one slice and get it to the point that I'm really satisfied with and then I'll move on to the next thing. And having, you know, that one like really tightly rendered point in uh, the painting that's, you know, you could say it's finished, that really motivates me to like, you know, move on and keep going forward. Um, a lot of people recommend, you know, you should work the whole canvas and that's good advice. I think that's really good when you're starting out is to, you know, get everything down and not just focus on one little corner. But this method for me really helps me out because I see like, you know, I, I could just focus in on this one point and get it to a finish and then that just carries me through the rest of the painting. Like it's all uh, gravy from there. So as for the design of this painting, I really wanted it to essentially be this tightly rendered object towards the bottom of the canvas 
and then be surrounded by all this ambiguous abstract space. And I was thinking at the lightest point in the back orange, where the light is kind of like hitting that like um, fibrous core, then it would actually like glow and lighten the background around it. So I put down this like very dark, I, ju I just completely ignore the wood texture. I'm not interested in painting that wood. And I'm gonna scrape back into the dark later and basically kind of reveal that burnt sienna underneath. And I'll have this warm glow to it, which is gonna make those light, those lightest lights like really start to pop out. And overall, it's just gonna be like this weird tightly rendered object floating in this totally dark space. And I thought that would be an interesting design for this still life. So as I get started on the second slice here, I wanted to quickly discuss my palette. And I've chosen to put out four colors, um, cadmium yellow, cadmium red, burnt sienna, and ultramarine blue. For my white, I have titanium white, and for a sort of a black, I have raw umber. And raw umber is close enough to a black. It acts like it when, it's, when I'm tinting a color. It's very warm, I guess, but I don't mind that since I could always mix a cool black with ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. I'll also use the raw umber when I'm doing the drying because it usually dries very, very quickly and sometimes it'll even be dry by the time I start laying in the first layer of colors. So right after I finished that first slice, this is what my palette looked like. And as you could see, a lot of mixing is just trial and error. So I'll mix a small pile and I'll decide it's too light, too dark, too this, too that, and I'll adjust appropriately. So just for example, I'll start with an orange mixture, which can just be cad yellow, cad red, a little bit of burnt sienna to taste, you know. And then if it needs to be less chromatic, for example, I could add some ultramarine blue or some raw sienna to dull it. Um, let's say I have that orange mixture and I need to go lighter. I could add some more cad yellow or I could add some more white. And if I need to go darker, I could mix a black or I could just add some raw umber. And you basically will mix a color and you'll pull it down and you'll make those comparisons. Then you go back to the palette and you make these adjustments. And that's just kind of like an overview. I don't want to get too technical with this video, but I can do a video specifically on color mixing in the future. I just um, don't want to get too bogged down in that right now. And there are a lot of great resources out there on mixing. This just, you know, I want to share my system. I like working with the just uh, these few colors because I get to really know how they're going to interact with each other. And, you know, with a palette like this where you have like these three primaries, you could pretty much mix anything like 98% of colors you can mix fine and you could definitely nail any re color relationship fine so for these still lives it's very useful if you made it this far through my rambling then thank you very much and you know let me know in the comments if there's a specific tutorial you want to see about like you know color mixing or values and I can um, try to work on that so this final slice was the easiest one to do because all the colors pretty much have already been mixed and are just on the palette. They just need to be picked up and put down where they need to go. Kind of like digital where you're not really mixing, you're like selecting. And it was pr pretty simple, it's pretty smooth sailing. I would say just because everything, most of the work has already been done. Um, I still need to pay careful attention to the edges and you know, paint quality, making sure my lights are thick and my darks are thin, all that jazz. So it's kind of interesting how oil paint has such a limited range for your lights where you're kind of like running up against titanium white as your lightest value and obviously in real life we could see like way brighter objects we could you know like if you look at like a, a light source it totally like blows out your vision and it's like a pure white so much brighter than titanium white the oil paint but that's kind of what we got to use to represent those light sources when we're trying to paint naturalistically so a lot of it is just darkening everything else that much so those whites by comparison seem that much brighter and so when I was painting this plate I remember thinking like it's really satisfying to be able to use this really really 
dark gray, like much darker than it looked to me on the model almost. But in comparison to those light uh, orange peels, this is what I have to do in order to set up that, you know, moment of these glowing orange uh, fibers and, you know, this sort of like glowing light, like hitting the plate. And I was really relieved here at the end when painting over that ellipse that I hadn't made enough inaccuracies to draw any attention to it and it was still reading it as ellipse and wouldn't distract from the oranges, which I was quite happy with. So I just want to thank everyone so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, comment, subscribe, etc. Um, I'm still just starting out, so I appreciate any feedback about the video that you have. And at this point, I think I prefer this more laid back commentary. But in the future, I also do want to make more scripted videos where I could go into detail about a specific fundamental or technique. So just let me know what you want to see. And thanks again.